In this section on inverse variation, our objective is to be able to analyze a relationship, relation to determine whether an inverse variation exists, determine the constant of variation, and represent an inverse variation algebraically. Let's begin with situation number one. The price of a ticket varies inversely with the number of students going to prom. The price of a ticket is $50 when 200 kids go to prom. What is the price of a ticket if 500 students go to prom? Well, to do this, we need to understand what it means to vary inversely. Let's come back to it in a little bit. Inverse variation. The relationship of two variables x and y such that y equals k divided by x. Remember direct variation? Let's just recall what that looked like. Direct variation is y equals k times x. It looked like that. Also, when we found the constant of variation, we divided by x. The constant of variation was y divided by x. Inverse variation is when k gets divided by x, k is not 0. Notice y equals kx was like writing y equals mx, which was the equation of a line. Inverse variation is not k times x, so it does not make a line. It's important to know that for graphical reasons. Graphing direct variation gives us a line. Graphing inverse variation does not give us a line. To find the constant of variation, also known as the constant of proportionality, which is the number that relates the two variables, starting with y equals k divided by x, to get k by itself, we have to do the opposite of divide, which is multiply, multiply by x. Notice that that leaves us with k equals x times y. The constant of proportionality is obtained by multiplying x times y. And because this does not make a line, k is not the slope in inverse variation. Let's look at some examples of recognizing inverse variation. Example one, are the equations below inverse variation? So just like we did with direct variation, when I see inverse variation, I want to right away write y equals k divided by x. If it does, identify the constant of variation, also known as the constant of proportionality. First one, y equals 1 half times x. Well, for multiplying a number times x, this one is not inverse. This one is direct variation because it's y equals kx. y minus 5x equals 0. Well, similarly to how we did it for direct variation, let's try adding the 5x to the other side because the y and the x are supposed to be on different sides. That makes y equals 5x. Again, this is direct variation because it's of the form y equals kx. Not inverse yet. Well, here we're dividing. What about y equals x divided by 8? But remember, the other way to write this is y equals 1 eighth x. This is also direct variation because it's of the form y equals kx. We're still looking for inverse variation. Number divided by x. y equals a number divided by x. Here it is. y equals a number divided by x. This one is inverse variation because it's of that form. The constant of variation? Well, that is the number that's being divided by x. So k is 8. What about this one? Again, the x and y are on the same side. So I could get rid of the x by dividing by x. 
But notice that in inverse variation, the constant is x times y. And that's what I have here. x is multiplied to y to give us a constant. So just seeing this, I know that this is inverse variation. But I can rewrite it to be y equals 3 divided by x by dividing both sides of this equation by x. See, divide by x. So y equals 3 divided by x, which is the form that we look for for inverse variation. The constant of variation in this one is 3. Example 2. Which tables below represent inverse variation? Again, I'm looking for y equals k divided by x. Now, in a table format, we want to be able to do the same thing with the x and the y every time. That means we'll get a constant of variation that's the x multiplied to the y, or x times y. If it does represent inverse variation, we will identify the constant of variation. That's the number we get by multiplying x times y. And then we will write an equation. So if we're looking for inverse variation, we don't want to do y divided by x. That give us, gives us direct. So we'll go this way this time. k will be x times y. So 1 times 2, that makes 2. 2 times 4, that makes 8. 4 times 8, that makes 32. I'm not going to keep going because I already see I'm not getting the same number. This one is not inverse variation. Now, if we needed to see if it's direct, remember that's when we go this way. For direct variation, that's when we're going to divide y by x. So in this one, 2 divided by 1 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 18 divided by 9 is 2. I get the same number when I divide. So this one is direct variation with a constant of proportionality of 2. However, when I go this way for inverse variation, k equals x times y, I don't get the same number. Next one. Let's set it up such that k has its column of x times y. 1 times 24 is 24. 2 times 12 is 24. 3 times 8 is 24. And 4 times 6 is 24. This time, I got the same number every time. So this one is inverse variation. And the constant of variation is 24. Now I can write an equation. y equals 24 divided by x. Last one. Let's go this way to find if k equals x times y. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 1 third times negative 9 is negative 3. So far, so good. Uh-oh, 2 times 6 is 12. That's not negative 3. So this one is not inverse variation either. Example 3. Which set of ordered pairs below represent inverse variation? Again, that's y equals k divided by x. Now, as a table of values, it's not as easy to tell, although we still can think of k is x times y. So we can multiply the x and the y together to quickly see if we have inverse variation. But perhaps setting it up in a table will make it easier. Let's find all the domain values and put them in the x column. Negative 2, 3, 5, 12. 
and all the range values and put them in the y column. 6, negative 4, negative 3, and 0. And then let's make a column for k, which is x times y, and we'll multiply these. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. And now we need to stop. I'm not getting the same value every time, so this one is not inverse variation. Let's check the last one. X and Y, and then we'll multiply them. X, all the domain, 2, 3, 4, and 12, and all of the range, 6, 4, 3, and 1. And then we'll make a column for k, multiplying x times y. 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 3 is 12. And 12 times 1 is 12. And we do have the same number every time. So this one is inverse variation. The constant of variation is 12. And the equation we need to write will be y equals 12 divided by x. Example number four. If y varies inversely with x, so I stop here and I write y equals k divided by x. And the constant of variation is negative six, so that means k equals negative six write an equation that represents this relationship. Well, I already have an equation for inverse variation, I just have to plug the k in. So that makes y equals negative six divided by x. Number five, a. If h varies inversely with p, so again, I see varies inversely, and I want to write y equals k divided by x. But I'm using h and p, so let's change that to h equals k divided by p. h equals 12 when p equals 4. What is the constant of variation? That's the k, and I don't know that yet. Let's plug in the 12 for the h, and the 4 for the p multiply to get k in inverse variation. 12 times 4 makes 48. So if k is 48, my equation using h and p is h equals 48 divided by p. Well, wait a minute. I jumped the gun. They didn't ask for an equation in this one. That's part b, an equation that relates h and p. This one just asks for the constant of variation, k. That's it, k is 48. Part B uses all of this information to say write an equation that relates h and p. That's where I take h equals k divided by p and plug in what I got for k. So h equals 48 divided by p. Always remember to read the question carefully so you're answering the question. Number six, if A varies inversely with B, let's stop here and write what we know is inverse variation, Y equals K over X, but this time it's A and B, so A equals K over B. A equals 15 when B equals negative three. Find the value of A when B equals eight. Let's start by finding our constant of variation. A is 15 when B is negative 3. To get our constant, we multiply the two numbers. That makes K, in this problem, negative 45. So let's plug that in. A equals negative 45 divided by B. Now they said, Find A when B is 8. 
a equals negative 45 divided by 8. That makes a equal to negative 5.625. Let's revisit situation number one now that we have some practice with inverse variation. The price of a ticket varies inversely with the number of students going to prom. So I see varies inversely and I right away write y equals k divided by x. If it says price, let's make price the first variable, y, number of students going to prom, so number of students will be x. So y equals the price, that's the money, and x equals the number of students. The price of a ticket is $50 when 200 kids go to prom. So $50 equals K divided by 200. In inverse variation, we're going to multiply to get K. 50 times 200, and that makes 10,000. So our equation, when we plug it back in here, Y equals 10,000 divided by x. What is the price of a ticket if 500 students go to prom? So the number of students is the x. 500 students means x is 500. What is the price? That's the y and I don't know that. So y equals 10,000 divided by 500. That makes 20. So if y is the price, $20 is the answer. Take a couple of minutes to write a short summary and describe what it means for two variables to vary inversely. See you in class.